In this video, I'm going to be showing you something you probably didn't know that you could do with the MailChimp embed form. Stay tuned. It's coming up next. One of the issues I've experienced with the MailChimp signup form is that it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You have one audience, one signup form. With the MailChimp embed form, you have the capability to add tags, which is fantastic. Except, what if you wanted to use two embed forms on your website? Could you use two different tags? And up until now, I would say no. But I've been doing some testing, and I think you're going to be pleased with the results that you can do more than one tag, and more than one embed form. And here's how we're going to do it. Starting on the dashboard here of my Play account on MailChimp, I'm going to go over to Sign Up Forms. One of the things that you should be doing before you start on embedding forms into your website is go to the form builder itself and make sure that you have all the fields that you want in there, add in any extra fields that you want and make sure it looks at the way you want it to. So in addition to the sign up form, you should be looking at what is the sign up for a form for the alerts looks like, what is recapture looks like, what is the confirmation thank you page, which I did change. So it goes to an alternative uh, URL versus hey, your, your subscription confirmed, this little pop-up that shows up, not very user-friendly, so I send them to a thank you page. Those are the things that you should be going through and looking at, uh, profile update email, all of this stuff, take a look at it, edit it and design it the way you want it to look like and make sure it's saying the same messaging to your subscribers, right? Back to the original page here, Let's go into embedded forms and start making this happen. So let's click on select. And now we go through all the options that you have. So we go into form fields. And again, these are all pulling in for your audience fields that you have. Additionally, you can add other fields if you want. So you can add a last name, any of these things that are here, or you can rotate these around and have email address first or, or first name. And so you can switch those around as you desire. And you can also make them required or unrequired as you see here. Easy enough. Settings. If you go into settings, they do provide the ability to add a title to your form. If you have other introductions, other things that are going on that page, you might necessarily don't want to have a form title. Next up is the width. If you don't want to have a specific width, just take it out. We're going to stick with 600 because I think that's okay for our testing here. Then we get into remove CSS styles. Now, if you are don't want to have this white background here and all the CSS styles that MailChimp provides, you can turn that off. So when you remove CSS styles, obviously all the CSS styles that are associated with your form from MailChimp go away. So that's why it looks kind of all scrunched up here. And then you have the ability to turn on or turn off JavaScript. JavaScript, if you mouse over the little eye here, tells you that it, it, it gives you the field validation and inline form submission. So it sends a little message that says, thank you for subscribing on the screen, that type of thing. So you can disable that if you want to, but uh, just remember it's also doing field validation, which means that it's checking to see, make sure that the information is correct and is not spam. Although you still could turn on recapture from your audience settings. Show format, you can check that off if you want. It enables a little option here for people to select whether they want HTML or text. Uncheck that. And then lastly, you have something called show archive link, which is pretty nice. So people who are interested in, to see what you've sent previously to your subscribers, your contacts, they can see that here. And uh, they click that link, it goes to your archive of your campaigns. We'll keep that unchecked and we will disable all JavaScript. Now that we have settings, let's go into tags because this is where it's going to be very exciting for a lot of you, I think. So I have a tag here called YT Video Test. I just created that on the fly to create something on the fly here with tags. You can say, you can just type in chocolate and then hit enter and then it adds chocolate as a new tag. Let's keep chocolate in there, take a YT video test and you can add in as many tags as you want in here. These are all my tags that I've been testing and, and using. And so you can add all of these tags in here if you want, but then that gets a little complicated on who's filling out what and it gets complicated for segmentation as well. So I wouldn't go crazy with the tags, but here's our tag chocolate done with tags the next option is referral badge i'm on a paid account so i have the ability to turn that off but like most of you you probably don't have that option so i'm going to leave that on let's click back we're all done with our settings we like the way the form looks we're going to click on continue 
we want to get this gobbledygook of code. It's called HTML. And so what we want to do now is want to click on copy code. Now I'm going to put this in a page. So we'll go over to our pages in our WordPress administration area here, and we're going to click on add new. And we're going to give it a title of, hey there, sign up for my webinar on chocolate. Something like that. Our block here, since we are using Gutenberg, is going to be custom HTML. And then we paste in our gobbledygook. We can preview to see what it's going to look like. Fantastic. No issues there. So then we're going to go over to uh, save as draft. And then we're going to click on publish. After we click on publish, we're going to view the page in the incognito window. And we'll see how it all looks. Right. So here's our first name. So we'll do Larry. And our email address will be this one go and click subscribe and it should take me to the thank you page and it does let's minimize that we want it to do we go over to our view contact for this person and we refresh and now we have the added tag chocolate so that's just one embed form let's create another one using the same process with a different tag go back to our embedded forms it's right here let's take out chocolate and let's add in vanilla. And now that we have that, we can go over to continue, copy the code, and let's create a new page to add this embed form on it. So here's our old one. We'll go up to new and we'll click on page. In the page title, we'll say, hey there, sign up for my course, vanilla. Same thing. We'll do custom HTML and paste it in. And then we'll save draft. We can either publish or preview. I'm going to preview this one. Open up in a new tab, sign up for my course on Vanilla. <laughs> and we'll do the same thing. Let's we'll do the same person. There we go. And click on subscribe. Goes to the thank you page. Go back to our contact and see if we now have vanilla. And we do. There's vanilla right there and chocolate. So there you go, guys. That's how you can use the embed form more than once with different tags. Hopefully this has helped. It's helped me quite a bit understand how we can use this type of feature. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. And if this is something that you enjoyed, make sure you click the like and the subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video.